So now what we're going to do is we're going to get fancy. And I, I, fancy is, is fun. Um, I'm going to um, keep the track 2 modifier that I pre put on the camera previously. We'll see if this works. In my experience, sometimes I've had to delete the track 2 modifier first. And then, because we're going to have another modifier that we're going to have to place on the camera. But before we do that, um, what I need to do is go through and delete my keyframes, okay, that I have on my camera right now. So I'm going to take my camera, I'm going to right click on that keyframe, I'm going to delete those keyframes. So my camera is just going to have, um, what was that? There we go. I hit it funny key. So now my camera is just staying in place. It's got no keyframes and nothing at all. <clears throat> I'm going to take my um, little crosshairs and I'm going to put them over here. I'm going to go back up to my add menu and we're going to add. And You can go in here and you can use a couple of these. You can use Bezier or Path. We're going to use a Path curve for this one. Um, it's, it's, it's directional uh, and it's a little easier to work with in this case. Um, Bezier curves are, are also very possible. Um, when it comes to a camera, I find that the path is, is the best. If you have too many curves, too many swishes and changes in direction, you don't want to make your audience seasick. You want a nice camera motion, but you don't want to go crazy with it either. Because if you go too crazy, then people can't understand what's happening, right? And we want people to understand what's going on. So I'm going to add my path here, and you can kind of see that it, it, it came in right here, okay? And uh, I can kind of set it up where I want it to be. And I'm going to move my camera <clears throat> to where I want to start this animation, which is kind of over here, just going to get a, a, a sense of it. We're going to do an arc. So I'm going to have the camera just swivel around in a semicircle. Now, you could probably achieve this by doing a rotation or something like that, but the camera path is actually a much better way to do it. And with the Track 2 modifier going to the empty, we have so much more control as well. So now I'm going to go back to my path here. And I'm going to go into edit mode. So tab into edit mode. And when I do that, all of a sudden you're going to notice that there's little arrows. The arrows are the arrows of direction. This is the direction of the motion that the camera is going to be going in. So you need to align things the right way. And you'll also notice that you have individual points. And notice as I start to manipulate these points, okay, even if I kind of go crazy with the points, it keeps the path in a nice smooth line. This is key for this sort of thing. It really helps us. Put that away. Um, okay, this really helps us a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the beginning. Um, oops, I always use the wrong keystroke here. I'm going to take the beginning point and I'm just going to put it as close to the camera as possible. And then I'm going to start evenly spacing these out as much as possible. And we're just going to get it started here. You can control this um, in a lot of different ways, okay? It's, and once we put the camera on the path, you'll be able to modify it and see in real time what changes uh, the path is making to our, our camera. The other thing is don't neglect the fact that you're in a three-dimensional area either. You need to move these points vertically as well. I'm going to put that up there. And just, I always go down, so f just to be different this time, I'm going to go up like this, okay? So now I can kind of see the path that I've set for my camera, and again, I can tweak it in a little bit. So now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to right-click on our camera. So I've got to tab out of edit mode, right-click on the camera, and now we're going to add a new constraint. <clears throat> and that constraint is, you probably could guess, just by looking, follow path. Um, before I do that, one of the things that I also like to do, and this is just for me, as you get animations that get more complicated, you can have multiple paths. You'll notice that this kind of came in as NURBS path. Okay? Well, that's boring, number one. Number two, if you started adding more than one path, it would go NURBS path one, two, three, four. Well, how do you know which one's which, right? So what I like to do is I like to name them camera path. Oops, but I have to be able to type first. Just like that, okay? So that way I know what that path is for. It's really good organization and I think it's an important thing for me to show you guys to do because 
while it doesn't really matter with this animation, if you get into something that's more complicated, you've got to name paths. You know, right now I've got cube and sphere. Woohoo. I should really name them like Rubik's Cube or, you know, uh, marble. You know, I should really name them something better so that as I get more objects, you're going to see this will start to change. You won't, it's like, which one is this? I don't know. You waste a lot of time that way. So anyway, all right, let's right click on our camera. <clears throat> Go back to our constraints. We're going to add our constraint. We're going to call it the follow path constraint. There we go. We click on our target. We say camera path. Now, one of the things that always happens is the camera moves, which frustrates me because I, of course, spent some time getting it to the right place. But that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try and move the camera back um, to its position. And what happens a lot of times as you do this the camera starts messing up. Part of this reason is the order of these um, constraints really matters. It will do one before it does the other, and it calculates one before the other. Well, really, our follow path should be first. <clears throat> okay. Now, right now, it's not doing anything, so let's kind of get it set up so we can um, have it do something. <clears throat> so we want it to... Um, we, well, what we need to do is we need to tell it at what time it's going to be at what point on the path. So here, I'm going to right click on my path again, and you'll notice that with the path, and only with the path, this little guy comes up here, object data. Okay, well not only, but for the path it's this symbol. And you can see down here, we have evaluation time. This is where we're actually going to add our keyframes. It's a little odd because you think you should add the keyframes onto the camera, but you don't. You're adding the keyframes on the path itself. So what I'm going to do, and this is where it gets a little weird. It's not weird. It makes sense, but it's just a little different. Is right now at zero, I want the camera to be at zero percent of the path, right? So I'm going to hit I, but I have to have the cursor over this right here. So I hit I, and you'll see it turns yellow. And then all of a sudden, we've got a keyframe in the timeline. And now we have a keyframe up here in the dope sheet under NURBS path. And we also will have one down here in our S curve editor or F curve editor as well. We don't have a curve yet because I haven't done the second keyframe. <coughs> so then <coughs> I'm going to move forward. I'm going to match this up with the other objects. And they're at the end of the animation. So I'm watching my dope sheet here. And I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to type 100 for 100%. 100 Notice the camera moves. Then I need to hit the I key again at, while the cursor is hovering over the evaluation time. And you'll notice it turns yellow. Now all of a sudden I've got two keyframes up in the dope sheet and I've got a curve down in the F curve editor. And if we take a look at our animation here, you'll see that the camera's moving. Now it's not perfect in any way, shape, or form. Okay, but that's all right. We're getting there. What we need to do now is <clears throat> we need to um, kind of move our camera along here and put it back on the path. Um, <clears throat> and this again might be where it'd be easier just to delete the, the constraint for the track two for a second. And let's get this right. So I'm going to delete the track two modifier for just a second here. And you'll notice now the camera is kind of uh, in a kind of wacky. Now you'll notice also that I can put the camera back down onto the path in the place that I want it to be. And I'm just going to put the end of the camera, that which is the, this is the rotate point, I'm going to put that on the path as close as I can. And remember, you have to look at it from all dimensions multiple times to get it really right on there. Now it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but it's always good. So now let's take a look at what's what's happening here. <clears throat> so now our camera is moving along the path. Now you can do all sorts of things. You can change the axis of the of how it works. You can go n um, z, negative y, and then they all do different things. Okay? But in my experience, y works the best. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add our track to um, uh, constraint back in 
set it back to our camera target, set it back to negative Z and Y, and you'll see it's kind of weird. All of a sudden, I haven't really changed much, but now the camera is going to, to uh, react a little differently. So let's look at it from the top. <clears throat> So the camera swivels around this arc, but it stays pointed in the center of the, um, uh, where the empty is. Now, if I wanted to, I could, I could have some fun with this. Let's right-click on the empty. Let's bring it forward. And look, look how, as I change things, you see it in real time in the, um, in the shot here. It's, it's pretty cool that way. I really, I really like how it just it changes things. Um, bring this there. Yeah, right about there. That's good. So I'm going to insert location, rotation, scale. I don't really need to do all three. I can just insert rotation, or location, I mean. So insert location, done. And then as we scroll forward, you'll notice now my target's off. So right about here, I want to move it forward. And probably down just a touch. Insert location. So now let's take a look at our animation by animating the empty as well as having the camera on a path. You can see I've made a really nice, it's a simple motion. Now the process to get it may be relatively complex, okay, but the motion itself, that's simple. And it's not something that's going to make my viewers seasick, but it enhances the composition of the animation and it allows me to see things better. And now what I can do is I can right click on my path, tab into edit mode, and if I and I can just scroll along the timeline and say, you know what, here I'd rather be a little closer. So I'm gonna right click this in. And you can see the camera is moving in real time along the path so that you can just sit there and you can check out exactly what the shot's going to look like at every frame. A nice little trick here, by the way, is after making a change, um, instead of going all the way down the timeline, you can hold the Option key down and scroll, and it will scroll along the timeline, which is kind of a nice little trick that Blender does for you. So to make something simple or look simple, sometimes you have to go through a couple of steps that can be kind of complicated. Here's a couple keys. Number one. Add the path to the camera before you have the Track 2 modifier. You notice that the Track 2 modifier kind of messed up the, the other one. Even once I reordered them, the camera still wasn't behaving exactly the way I wanted it to. As soon as I put the camera on the path and then deleted the Track 2 modifier and then re-added it, all of a sudden things started to work better. So that's key number one. If you're going to, well, you're going to have to do this. It's part of the assignment. So when you do this, do the path. Then add the Track 2 modifier, okay? Uh, if you've already added the Track 2 modifier, just delete it and re-add it. It takes 15, 20 seconds to do that, and it's not a big deal. Um, and then remember that in order to modify the path, you have to go into the edit mode. And if you, once you're ready to animate, you're animating the distance along the path in percentage. And you have to do that by hitting the I key when the mouse is hovering over that bar, okay, under the object data. It's called evaluation time. Now, let me say one last thing about the evaluation time. Let's, I'm going to go all the way to the last keyframe here. <laughs> it's a little confusing because it'll let you go beyond 100%. You don't need to just, you can't just slide it. Just type in 100% and you're good to go. Okay, um, but don't get confused by that. That's a little weird. Um, I think that it allows you to do that. Let's say if you were to have a circle, okay, 100% would mean one rotation, but you could have something fly multiple times, so it allows you to go past 100%. But here, my path ends, so going beyond 100% doesn't do anything better for me. Okay, it doesn't change anything. In fact, it might even screw things up. So just stick to 100%. Does this make sense to everybody? So we're going to add a little camera motion. Any questions? All right. Good to go.